Ophelia, I'm making this video to you because, frankly, you're the only person in all of Free Thought blogs and or in uh, Atheism Plus who's in a position of, oh, I guess you'd call it leadership or direction, who actually um, corresponds with me personally. My birthday is the anniversary of the beginning of the death of my daughter and whatever the holiday is after it. Is it Labor Day? My birthday is uh, late August. So my whatever the holiday is after that was the actual anniversary of her death. And it's a little bit stressful time for me. It happened 17 years ago now. I had just started the Atheism Plus group on Facebook. I snagged it before the trolls could grab it, and the trolls came in. A nest of some very, very vicious people. One of them posted a video by Girl Rights What and wanted to get into a conversation about how either feminism or atheism plus was, quote, too emotional and not rational or skeptical, to which I responded an integrated person uh, has both emotional and rational uh, in their personality makeup and to... Uh, expect people to act like talking calculators transported by a body is not healthy and I don't trust people like that because I think they're in denial of their own emotions as can be seen by the fact that they can spew hate speech and then go neener neener we hurt you we're enjoying watching you squirm if you were a real man you wouldn't be squirming I posted to you the correspondence that somebody let me know about via a screen capture in which they say a lot of disparaging things about the fact that I am brave enough to be out about the fact that I have brain injuries, made up a bunch of stuff about me, uh, pretended they were scared of me. What it was was I refuted their contention that atheism plus and or feminism, I don't remember which, is too irrational. They couldn't refute my arguments, they couldn't stand up to it, and they wanted an excuse to vilify me, so they used the fact that I'm brave enough to be out about my disabilities as an excuse. They did this right around the time of the anniversary of my daughter's death. And I maintained, I kept it together, and I took care of business, and they are now, the lot of the trolls has all been tossed out of the Facebook group, because I don't need the disruptive stuff that was going on. And I had everybody's name, so it was very convenient. And I knew who was who. I'm a gracious hostess. When people come in, I welcome them. And I treat people with courtesy and respect. And then find out this little gossip stuff's been going on. So I just got rid of them. Because if they'll do it to me, they'll do it to somebody who might not be as strong as I am. Or as used to this sort of... Um, character assassination as I am, somebody who might be permanently damaged by it. But I gotta say, it's a good way to burn people out. Then I heard a woman had questioned the scribe thing, the um, attempt to caption videos. I don't know her, I don't know anything about her, and I want to learn. I found out where she blogs, and I want to hear the whole story, but from what I've seen of the comments that were directed toward her, they were pretty vicious and pretty intolerant and came to some pretty radical assumptions about everything from her politics to probably what color underwear she wears. Real vicious accusations, and I don't see her as being one of those just asking questions trolls. I think she had some real concerns about copyright, and she wanted some clarification, and she got dogpiled, real seriously. And I would like to know more about that. I posted something about that in the Facebook group. Somebody in the group said, I know somebody who knows somebody who knows that guy that was in the discussion, Trini Yoler, maybe? And I said that I'm interested in learning about both sides. So I let the person into the group, and I said, these are my concerns. It looks like the woman is genuinely hurt that she was uh, accused of being a libertarian when in fact she is a socialist. Uh, that she's actually an Atheism Plus supporter and this trineolar person, assuming that she was infiltrating to tear the joint apart. And I honestly, personally, I don't see that in what she was writing. I think she was attacked for merely questioning. 
And I think that's dangerous. In the Facebook group, I said that I think this woman is genuinely hurt by what happened. I think she was an Atheism Plus supporter. I think she was brutally attacked, accused of a lot of stuff that wasn't even... Nobody even asked what her motives were. They just assumed. And she's hurt, and I want to find out more. Well, that was the end of the thread, I thought. Today, one of my subscriptions, Feminist Horror, on YouTube, put up a video called a either a critique or a criticism regarding Atheism Plus, and I think that her arguments are substantial. I made the mistake of listening to the video the first time without looking at it because I couldn't find my glasses. She had screen caps, and I wasn't all that interested in the details. I just wanted to listen to what she had to say. She mentioned one of your blog posts. It was the one, something about Kim Kardashian something. And then somebody had left a comment uh, that some of the stuff that was said might have been used to bait the uh, libertarian type vicious white boys by using something about sex work in the argument and that by using that argument uh, had accidentally caught up in the bait a sex worker who had left a comment and who got dogpiled on. I listened to the video and I thought well I'll put it in the Facebook group so people can see what people are saying because I'm very sympathetic to sex work and to sex positive feminism. Um, there's some people on YouTube that I respect a great deal who go up against almost insurmountable odds to um, defend sex workers' rights in the face of some really vicious attack, and nobody has their backs. A friend of mine is at work, he can't look at the video, wanted a brief summary. So I started re-watching the video, this time looking at the screen caps with my glasses on, and started posting little comments in the Facebook page so that my friend would know what the gist of the video was. Well, this friend of a friend of... Trinioler said something about Rogie, I'm tired of you uncritically uh, taking the words of the haters. I'm like, what? I didn't get that at all. Then I realized that what he was objecting to was the fact that I was basically transcribing bits of the video into the Facebook so that my friend at work could read the gist of the video because they can't watch it at work. Then you posted what Trini Oler says, a uh, comment to PZ's excellent response to Ron Lindsay's post, in which Trini Oler speaks of the local CFI branch that has, it started out fairly libertarian, focused on laughing at creationists, etc. So some of the original organizers we're the branch of libertarian skeptics, atheists, we are having so much trouble with now. The CFI chapter got completely infested with these, well, nasty people. People who were trying to do uh, useful, positive, proactive work uh, got burned out. And, quote, everyone who had fought them while getting in trouble for, quote, causing trouble, end quote, has left. Essentially, by not throwing out the racists, the sexists, the ones who lie and mislead, and are not skeptical at all, they've lost most of the next generation of skeptical organizers. They've lost volunteers and dues-paying members. Skipping to the bottom. So to whoever says this divisiveness is bad, it really is for your organization, not ours. It will cost you volunteers and members and energy because you won't do what's necessary. Well, Ophelia, here's the thing. I'm burning out. I'm not even on the front lines. I'm, you know, I get my share of random trolling on my videos about Atheism Plus, but not much. I don't have very many subscribers. I think I've got like just over 200 maybe, maybe 50 views of each video. My ones on Atheism Plus get a little bit more. I get people who come in and leave comments that have, I know haven't even seen the video because they're asking about stuff I didn't even talk about. I have a real strong policy of, if you're abusive, your comment is erased and you are blocked, period. 
I handled it just asking questions, people, by saying, you're not on topic what you have to say about what I wrote. And when they can't come back with anything, I say, look, it's obvious you haven't seen my video. You're disrespecting my work and my channel. I'm not going to have my conversation derailed. Goodbye. And if they persist, then they get blocked. But I'm trying real hard not to get dogpiled by a bunch of haters. But then I see this thing on Kim Kardashian, the little innocuous comment I left about sex work. It was a throwaway. It wasn't anything deep and heavy. And some so-called feminists got in there and they dogpiled me. I didn't know any of this. If Feminist Horror hadn't made the video, I never would have known it. Attributed things to me that I never even thought of. I am a genderqueer and I live in poverty. I can't afford all that gussied up stuff and I wouldn't want it if I could. I don't go to the beauty parlor. I don't wear makeup. I don't get my nails done. I can barely keep them clean. My clothes come out of the dumpster. On rare occasions, I will wear a pair of heels in bed, and that's been a long time ago. I don't have any lovers because my teeth are so damn bad. I don't want to try to be romantic with somebody if I can't kiss them, and I won't kiss anybody with this filthy mouth. It's been about 20 years since I did any sex work. I only did it for a brief spate of time, and I didn't even really consider it sex work. Because, you know, people are in denial about stuff, and I wasn't a prostitute, I wasn't a whore. You internalize those messages that it's bad and evil. But I was a sex worker for a brief period of time, and it was a really enjoyable occupation. I liked my clients, I liked my work hours, I liked my economic independence, I liked the fact that I could get medical care. Uh, it wasn't stressful like the factory work that I've always done, and the custodial work that I've always done, it's shit work, working on a line in a factory, chasing down 50,000 White Castle hamburgers an hour, making sure they all had tops on them, working with dangerous chemicals that explode if they're mixed with water to make silicon cells for solar energy plants. I've done really shitty, crappy work, and sex work was, it was fun, it was interesting, I enjoyed my clients, I kept my own hours, that's all I wrote in the comment. I came to Atheism Plus because I saw it was a chance for me to have a voice about what the issues of poor people are. You know, I have disabilities, I'm queer, I'm genderqueer, I'm of mixed race. I've had to do a lot of things to survive. Some of them, not legal. People like me are imposed upon by religion all the damn time. I keep saying you can't get a can of beans at a food pantry without hearing how horrible and evil you are. Doesn't matter if you're queer or not. Doesn't matter if you're sex worker or not. Doesn't matter. You're evil. They're recruiting into God's army. I came to Atheism Plus because I said, finally, a place where people can actually do some positive work as atheists and make an impact on the community. Let people see that atheism isn't what they've been told it is and that we really care about stuff. The way the whole thing is handled, I can't get a word in it. Why, well, shoot, over on uh, Jen's forum thing, I posted that there's the Reddit, and I posted that there was the Facebook group, and Jen personally replied, I don't know who started the Facebook group. Well, hell, it's not a big secret. It's easy to find out who I am. The official Facebook group, well, I'll tell you what, that official Facebook group is a page. It's full of trolls now. Nobody's tending to it. I tried to put some positive, proactive posts on it, but I got to tend to the, the Facebook group that I started. So today I don't get any positive stuff about, you know, I'm creating documents of resources for where people can get free knowledge and learn about homelessness and learn about mental health issues and disability rights and people of color. I'm putting up documents with access to resources. I work really hard on that group. I had to deal with those dang trolls and get them all out of there. And today this person comes in and starts ragging on me for giving another member a summary of a video that that person can't watch at work. And now I suspect it's Trini Oler. Well, it's a friend of Trini Oler's. Well, Trini Oler's right to be worried and, you know, the divisiveness and stuff tearing apart skeptical and secular organizations. That's a valid concern. But it's not me. If we all start turning on each other, well, I know how to close the group. I can just eliminate all the members one by one, and then after I eliminate myself last, the group will die. I don't want to have to do that. But, you know, I'm taking shit off of those 
libertarian woman haters. I'm taking shit off of feminists. Now I'm taking shit off of somebody who's a friend of somebody else who, that I don't even know that I invited in to have a decent conversation to which that person didn't even contribute. I live on $700 a month. Half of that goes to a Bible thumper, that's what he calls himself, landlord who's an ex-cop, to live in a damn parking lot without running water. Ophelia, I have very limited resources and very limited strength. I'm tired. I'm sick. I'm old. And if people don't have my back, if I can't expect some at least civility and respect, I don't expect people to love me, but it would be nice to have a little support. And it feels so completely silenced. That's why I'm making this video. I don't have a blog. Nobody pays attention to me. You're the only one who even listens to me half sometimes. And I'm afraid to tell you much about what's going on because I don't want to alienate you too. I can't deal with this all alone. I need to know people have my back.